Hi, I'm Joe Paiva with GeoLearn, and I'm here with the team from University of Akron in Ohio, just in case people hear about Akron and don't know it's in Ohio. But anyway, this is the student team in the competition that NSPS ha is holding uh, in March of 2017. So I'm going to begin by going through, uh, beginning with the team leader and asking the students to introduce themselves and to also talk about where they are in their academic career in terms of completion and also what they hope to do once they finish their studies. I'm Travis Caldwell. I'm a senior in the program, actually in my last semester, and uh, I'm working for a company currently and can plan to continue with them. I'm Aubrey Tobin. I'm a sophomore in the program, and after this I'll have two more years, and I plan on working with my dad at his surveying company. Uh, I'm Zach Hayes. I am a senior about to graduate, and I've accepted a position with a construction company. I'm Jake Stair. I'm a junior, and I just plan on working until I get my PS. I'm Michaela Corbett. I'm a sophomore, and I plan to continue to work with the civil engineering company that I do now. I'm Jacob LaRue, and I work out of with a local company out of Northwest Ohio doing heavy industrial and boundary surveys. So I've heard your presentation, and yours uh, was quite different from uh, a lot of the other presentations in the sense that you were doing um, what people used to call in the old days um, optical tooling, or maybe a little bit more in, uh, recently uh, industrial measurement and you used a unique instrument that maybe a lot of surveyors are not familiar with. So uh, tell us about the technologies you used. Uh, so we used the Faro Digital Laser Tracker and uh, it actually originated in dentistry and it, uh, it's, it's highly accurate. It measures to 10 thousandth of an inch and it's, it's, it's awesome. It's, it's real-time results and it's, uh, it was a lot of fun to use. And what other technology did you use? Uh, we used the optical mechanical uh, digital auto level with a micrometer on it. So both of these in instrumentation, is this something that you normally use in your classes at Akron? Um, no, not necessarily. Like especially with the tracker, we've none of us have come in contact with it until this project. And especially like with a certain type of auto level that we used. I personally never used it. I don't know about anyone else. But. Okay. So you're probably referring to the micrometer part of the level? Yes. Very good. So in terms of um, the objective of the exercise when you went to this factory, uh, tell me about what the objective was. Uh, well, our objective was to perform as uh, realistically a uh, mechanical alignment as what they would do when they were setting equipment and uh, while we didn't actually set the equipment it was very realistic in how we did our met did our methodology okay so to make uh, this uh, slightly opaque pro uh, project a little bit more transparent for our viewers many of whom don't have any industrial experience what was this factory and what was happening here uh, they heat and then quench uh, steel bars for oil and uh, drilling, and then what it does is it runs through the facility and it runs through all these, uh, very slow pace, uh, high heat and then low heat, and then they quench it quickly with water, and then they uh, test that, and it actually creates a really strong steel but a pliable steel, so you can actually drill at angles. So this is uh, uh, producing uh, steel uh, bars or pipe and things like that? Yeah, they bring the steel bars that they've already uh, manufactured in there, and then they go through the heating and quenching. So I'm assuming that the purpose here is not to have precise steel bars, but to have rollers or other methods of conveying the steel bars so that they're properly aligned so that you're actually producing reasonably straight lengths of steel. Is that right? Yes, that's correct. So tell me um, how it felt to do this project since you had no experience with this. This is a lot different compared to what I normally do at my um, current job. I, I've never really worked with a tracker before, and I haven't had much experience with the level, so it was definitely very different, very cool, too. So in your presentation, you talked about uh, a fairly limited number of these trackers in the United States. Of course, it's just one brand. I know there are other brands as well. Um, but you worked with a specialist company that uses these trackers to provide this service. 
Uh, tell me about that business and uh, is that something you'd be interested in doing once you graduate? The subject is very fascinating and there is a very good possibility I would like to do this after graduation. And because of the limited number of these trackers in existence in the United States, it requires a great deal of travel around because every industrial site with any type of assembly line process going on needs to utilize these high precision trackers now, especially with the growing use of robots and automated process. So tell me uh, that uh, as students you were doing this somewhat simulating what a professional team would have done. So what was the outcome? Did you come to the conclusion that no adjustments were needed on this system? Uh, yes, because of the slow speeds of it, there were no adjustments needed to it. Uh, if it were to be a, a higher speed with uh, lower tolerances, then there would have been uh, some adjustments that would have needed to be made. Tell me a little bit about what you learned from doing this project, um, either that you just learned that you didn't know before, or that you think might be helpful in your future career, whatever that might be. Uh, it, it actually it was very relatable to standard surveying. I mean, it's it's using the same principles as straight lines, 90 degree angles. Uh, you're just working with very small numbers. Same question. Okay. So, like, just the whole process was just new and very interesting to learn, especially everything with the tracker being more new, more recent than, ever, than with the traditional method itself. What are you taking to your future career professionally that you might have gotten out of doing this project? Uh, not to be overwhelmed by the complexity of a project because when we first talked about this we were it was a little over our heads and then after we got there we're a little comfortable with it. It's really the same thing that I do at my job every day just on a much tighter scale. Yeah. So how did it feel to be planning for a moonshot when you finally did the moonshot? How did it feel? It was great. It was a lot of fun. It was, uh, um, it was, I can understand the stress that they have when they're lining equipment up. I mean, because of the, the uh, accuracy that's needed. So to get that feeling to actually be a part of that job and like understand what they go through in that setting, it was awesome because it was definitely something I don't think any of us tolerance wise have ever dealt with. You have very limited time on site, so you had to do a lot of preparation to get there. Did that give you any clues about how you might, in the future, conduct your professional activities? Um, as far as just general safety training, like on any job, well, this because of the facility we had to go to, we had to undergo way more safety training than what we normally would go through. Um, if you know, uh, where I work, normally you go through OSHA 10 or OSHA 30. Here, we had to go through plant-specific training and then online training and so forth. What are you taking to a professional career from all this? Just the don't, over, don't be overwhelmed by the scale of a project and just take it one measurement at a time. You don't look at the whole thing. You look at one individual part at a time and take it piece by piece, and the whole thing will come together. Well, it was a very interesting project, very interesting presentation. Wish you all the best in the results, and thank you for spending time with us today. Thank you.